Ronaldo, you can commit by me because it's Valentine's Day. All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today for our account automation webinar. Just a quick reminder to yourself if, you, um, yeah. if you're on the call right now. So we don't need uh, sound noise. Um, so my name is Eric Johansson uh, with Carlisle Printer Service and Supplies. Uh, today, we're really excited to have uh, Nick Loria from uh, Softworks um, helping with a presentation today on accounts payable automation. He is going to give us a really deep dive into exactly what, how the software works, how it can benefit your organization, and just how to help your overall accounts payable automation process inside of your individual organization. So we're going to get really deep today, and uh, we're excited that, uh, to have him uh, to be able to go over everything. Um, before we jump into that, I just wanted to talk about three quick things uh, from a Carlisle perspective. And, and one is just you know, why people are choosing accounts payable automation uh, software and, and how that's a value to an organization. Uh, two is why people are choosing Square Nine Softworks. And three is why people are choosing Carlisle. So to, to jump right into that, you know, the challenges that, that we see a lot of organizations facing are kind of sixfold when it comes to AP document workflows. You know, there's a high cost of manual uh, vendor invoice processing. It's just a very manual time oriented process. Uh, there's a risk of misplaced or lost document as paper flows around the office. I think we've all run into that before where, you know, I dropped that off on your desk. Did you get it approved? Oh, I don't remember seeing it. Those kind of conversations. Um, there's, you know, current status of any given vendor invoice is not easily known. And that leads to um, missing out on early payment discounts, as well as potential late fees from vendors. And there's just unclear whether business, um, the business rules are being enforced, right? Do you have the right approvals for the right size of accounts payable invoice? Are they going to the right people? Um, are, we, are we meeting the expectations for ourselves and our vendors? So when we look at the software, there's you know, a lot of value that it provides to our customers. Um, but the, the three main ones that we hear consistently is that it, it helps simplify and streamline your office workflow. Um, it increases your access to the information. And most importantly, it saves time. So when we look at simplify and streamline your office workflow, it helps the, with the creation of an office workflow map. And everyone has one of these, whether it's in their own head, on paper, or in an electronic system. But we work with our customers to create a workflow map for them to be able to understand exactly the best way for documents to, to flow through their organization from deciding something needs to be purchased to paying that vendor and doing the receiving. Uh, it routes the documents to the appropriate approvers, uh, routes document back for payments, and you can even implement web forms, which Nick is going to talk about today, to automatically capture the information from customers and staff and then centrally store that. You know, overall, it just simplifies the whole process. Everyone knows where their part in the, the process is, and it reduces the human error through computer automation. The second one we hear, and, and we hear it a lot during uh, the time of COVID that we're living through right now, is you can access your documents from anywhere. So you can be at home, you can be in the office, uh, you could be uh, anywhere in the world and be able to still follow the same workflow process. And we're seeing this a lot with the move from work to home. And we're, we're, we're having a lot of questions from customers that are seeing a, um, when COVID is, is behind us, a kind of a travel boom and wanting to be able to have a higher degree of control over check payment and processing of payables um, from a distance if, if a decision maker or a check signer is going to be away for long periods of time. Um, you get immediate access across departments and then secure document access as well. So the benefit there is we, we see inside of organizations a lot where you'll have a central keeper of information where, you know, they'll have a contract administrator or an HR um, um, team member. And, and they're the one that, that if someone needs that information, they go to and they disseminate it uh, with Square Nine Softworks and, and document management. You know, you can predefine who needs access to things like contracts or HR and then be able to have them be able to get that information themselves rather than have kind of a keeper of that information, as well as it reduces the, the storage requirements. So you're able now to get rid of some of those those uh, office cabinets with stacks of paper and just move all that digitally. You know, and, and finally, uh, and probably most importantly for our customers, it, it saves them time. So, you know, the program automatically extracts the information from their documents. Nick's going to show that today. Um, indexes and storage stores it for you to be able to retrieve later and to work through the AR process that, that we define together. Um, there's no lost paper, no chasing approvers. It's just easy throughout the process. 
And when we break that down, you know, we're, we're kind of a numbers driven organization, you know, we always try to, to, to put a number to things like this. And what, what we've seen and what Square Nine has seen is that, you know, workflow enables companies to reduce their labor related expenses by 50% and improves productivity by an average of 37%. It just incre- it, it just saves time throughout every step in the process to be able to get to that 50% reduction. Um, when you're looking at ROI, which is always an important consideration for our customers, um, a very impressive 85% of users of Square Nine recoup their, their investment within 12 to 18 months, 50% within nine months, and almost a quarter of them, 22%, uh, get payback in as little as six months. So the software does quickly pay for itself in terms of time savings and efficiencies. And then also a typical employee spends up to 30% of their time looking for information that's locked in email, documents, shared, drives, filing cabinets, all those things. Um, with the indexing that, that Nick will show you today, it really uh, eliminates all of that time and frees it up for higher value activities. So that's kind of why people move to automation, um, you know, but why choose Square 9? Right. And there, there's five main main reasons that we feel like Square Nine is the best choice. One is that you know, they're one of the fastest growing document automation providers in the market. Um, so they provide a great product and great service to be able to do that. Uh, they have over 20 enhancements per year to their um, to their software. So they're constantly evolving, constantly making the, the process better, listening to user feedback on additional feature sets that they need to be had. With any software, it's only as good as, as the implementation and the support that comes behind it. And Square Nine has an average customer uh, support response time of under seven minutes, which is really quite impressive. In terms of customer satisfaction, they have a 96.4% overall customer retention. So when people sign up for uh, Square Nine, they, they typically stay with Square Nine and, and use them as a long-term solution for their company. It's also very scalable, you know, uh, when we work with customers to create a scope of work, it can be something very small to something very large and they work with over 13,000 or sorry, 21,000 uh, customers uh, from small businesses to uh, large enterprises. Further to that, so that's why Square Nine, why Carlisle, and, and, and we feel like we offer a really unique um, opportunity to, to work with local support. We have, we have trained uh, team members here in Winnipeg while also having partnerships with one of the fastest growing document management workflow companies in North America in Square Nine. So not only can you, are you working with a large software provider, but you also have kind of that local feet on the ground support as well in Carlisle. Secondly, we have hands-on business experience with it. So we've got, uh, we've done extensive local testing of, of a lot of the different alternatives and really found that Square Nine is, is the most intuitive, easy to work with and, and gives the highest level of support uh, to the organization. So you already have someone that's done a lot of that vetting for you. And then finally, you know, Carlo is one of the largest providers of, of office equipment and supplies. So we can provide assistance with integration of, of scan hardware into the solution. Um, you know, our existing equipment for our customers scans over uh, 12 million pages every month. And now we're really just trying to work with our customers to be able to extend that capability we've already provided them to, to a workflow solution uh, within the office. You know, these are just a couple of the, the Square Nine user community. Um, so they work with every vertical that's out there in the marketplace from entertainment to finance to manufacturing and distribution. We will forgive them for working with the Minnesota Wild hockey team. Um, but you can just see here just kind of the, the, the depth and the size of organizations that, uh, that they work with. So with that, you know, I'm going to hang, hand you over to uh, one of the Square Nine gurus, uh, Nick. And um, as we go through the presentation, you'll see in um, Zoom that there is a, a chat feature that's available. At the end of the presentation, we are going to have some time to be able to jump into some of those Q&A questions. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of circle back to those. So feel free throughout the entire presentation to write notes into that chat and we'll make sure that those get addressed at the end. This call is also going to be recorded. So if there's anybody else inside of your organization that you'd like to um, share this information with, um, we will send that to you within a couple of days of this presentation. So you can share that with uh, other members of your team if this is something that you're interested in, in talking about more. And with that, I'm going to hand you over to, to Nick, who will, will share his screen, and he can talk to you a little bit more about the, the exact details of Square Nine and the, um, the services that it can provide and the value it can bring to you. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Eric. Can everyone hear me okay? Eric, can you hear me okay? I can hear you good. Beautiful. So number one, uh, thank you so much um, to Carlisle for setting this up, both to Eric and his team, um, as well as everyone here on the call for taking some time out of uh, the middle of the week to learn a little bit more about document management and, and what things look like. Are you guys seeing my screen okay here with the, uh, the Square 9 website? Yes. Beautiful. So as Eric had mentioned, my name is Nick Gloria. I am a solutions consultant here at Square 9 Softworks. I assist um, clients and, and, and partners, value-added partners such as Carlisle with understanding what a company's trying to do and, and what a solution might look like, what kind of automation makes sense, what kind of automation doesn't make sense, and putting together a solution that makes the most sense for you. We're a company whereby we are creating solutions that are prepackaged. We can also create anything as bespoke as you might want. Um, so do keep that in mind as I'm kind of showing you things here today. Um, today's presentation is primarily about AP automation, and that can mean a couple of different things. So I'm going to start to hone in on some of those some of those features and really start to define automation as that makes sense. And as Eric mentioned, please, if you have any questions, drop that into the chat. And after my presentation, um, Eric and myself will be able to address those. Um, and as mentioned, this is recorded. It will be available to you uh, via Carlisle. So if you're seeing my screen here, these are really kind of the four kind of main pieces of what Square 9 brings to the table. Um, that is related directly to being able to capture documents. Eric already mentioned that you might have paper uh, piling up within filing cabinets. You might have paper uh, piling up into uh, various locations. It's difficult to track paper. It's difficult to work with paper. It's difficult to search for paper. So we want to give you options where you can capture documents, where you can put documents into a, a content management system that makes sense, as well as build some workflows and some, some processes around that. So as Eric mentioned, you want to be able to create a workflow for, let's say, invoice approval process, or if you were in the HR world around employee retention or in the contract world around expiration and managing documents. We also have our own forms product, which is actually where we're going to start here. So for today's specific uh, content, I'm really looking at AP. And so a form that I want to highlight to you is a pre-built form that we have called a purchase request form. So Global Forms is our form-based product where you can, as you imagine, create any process that might be a paper-based process. It might be something that maybe exists in a system, but maybe not well. Depending on the size of your company, your PO request process and approval process might be pretty informal. It might be, I fill out a piece of paper and I give it to Eric and it kind of goes from person to person. But what we've done here is we've actually created a pre-built purchase request form that is a good start of where the automation can begin on this particular journey. So imagine that I am an employee at company X and I need to get a PO. I've already spoken with somebody about what needs, to, uh, what needs to go into this PO. Um, let's say that it's a music supply because that's what most of, my, uh, most of my demos are kind of built around. So I can actually open up this form. This could be a cloud hosted form. It could be a form that's installed locally on your premise. And if you are going cloud hosted, even though we are based in New Haven, Connecticut, uh, within the United States, we do offer cloud hosting um, within Canada as an option for you. So I might come in here, I might log into this specific form. There's a couple cool things that are happening here. Number one, I am auto-generating PO numbers within the system. So if you're using a, a, a purchase software where you have a PO1 and that goes to PO2, three and four, we could do a lot of the same thing here. Since this is a demo setup, you can see how many times this has roughly been shown to various people, quite a few. Um, so this PO number can be generated. We can edit this however you want. We're also grabbing the date as well. So we've got today's date in here as well as some drop-down fields. So I might be using myself as a, as a requisitioner, AKA John Doe. I can also choose the exact terms of what I might want for this particular PO. As far as vendors go, you might have hundreds of vendors that you might work with. Out of those hundreds of vendors, you might only have a couple um, that you work with mostly. So we're gonna give you an ability to kind of save a whole bunch of different vendors within here. In this case, I'm gonna be working with the Fender, Fender Musical Instruments Corporation. And then down here, I can go ahead and add some attachments. So if I have some quotes, um, that Fender Musical Instruments has provided to me for various things. I can now upload those documents if I want to, again, as supporting documents. But under my PO details, I can easily come through here and start adding in information one by one. Now, if I'm relatively new to this process, I could be typing in, but we're really talking about how we can make this process smarter. And that's where on this particular form, I also have some saved items for things that I'm able to create. So I can actually create items from things that I maybe order a lot of. So from this drop-down menu, I can actually start to grab very specific um, items that I've ordered before and auto-populate that to the field. 
So I might add maybe one of these uh, fenders. I might add maybe a, a specific Stratocaster. I'm kind of partial to the Olympic white. My brother-in-law actually literally just bought a fender candy apple red. And let's grab maybe a uh, Lake Placid Blue. Sounds pretty good. And I can add those items. So I've got all my line items here of the PO. I can adjust these quantities as I need to. Maybe I only want one of these Telecasters and I'll tab on over maybe to my my Stratocaster Olympic, maybe only two of those. I mean, I'm, I'm feeling bold, but not that bold. And you can see that my unit costs are automatically being calculated as a total field, which is also automatically being calculated to the overall requisition amount. I can drop in some notes here if I want to. I can even PO copy myself on this email. I can select my approver, in this case, maybe John Smith, and I can submit my purchase request. Now in the automated sense, this is where this particular PO request, it's not like a PO request gets sent in and people automatically start ordering things right away. I might submit this, but this might go to Sandra at Carlisle. She might look at it and say, yep, this looks good. We might put in some rules that if it's above $5,000, Eric needs to look at it as well. So we can add in some of that process document routing to get this to wherever this needs to go. I click on submit purchase request and away this goes. This has been received. Again, you could rescale this however you want. Thank you for your request. Thank you for sending this information. But what exactly happens to this document? So let's pretend that for a minute we have taken um, all of the various requests. In this case, it's just going to grab it and drop it into my global search system so that I can easily find it. So I go over here into my global search system. I'm gonna pull up a variety of documents that live in here. Now, a little bit of a tour here about Global Search if you have not seen it before. Again, this is a browser-based system. Um, if you're storing this within a cloud-hosted setup within Canada, this is your primary way of doing it. If you're going on an on-premise route installed in a server or a machine on your office, this is also probably the primary route that you're gonna search and find information. We want more of a browser client because A, you don't have to keep installing software on new machines every single time you get them. And B, it makes it a little bit easier for you to connect and work from pretty much anywhere. Um, that was more of a, hey, that's pretty great in 2019 to fast forward the first couple of months of 2020, people started wondering why we haven't done that all along uh, when everybody was being displaced um, within the, uh, within the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So within this particular global search system here, I have a couple of different archives. I'm storing all sorts of documents, human resources, contracts, AP, where I'm focused in today. And since my AP archive is open, I'm viewing documents like vendor invoices and purchase orders and packing slips. And even in this case, checks uh, from something that I was playing around with. Now I have a purchase order here and it's gonna release with the same exact number. So if I open up my purchase order tab, you'll see that my PO for Fender Musical Instruments Corporation has already come in with that specific PO number. But bear in mind, I could also refine a search down and I could search on a PO number, bring that number in, run my search and I'll be able to find it right away. So I can do all sorts of very simple, easy searching to find documents that I want. I can go ahead and open up this document and this is what that form was able to create. It took a pretty standard PDF that I had created in Word. I even kind of branded it up a little bit. And I went and I grabbed all of this information to drop on. So I've got my vendor name that I pulled from the actual record. I've got my Telecaster and Sage Green to each of my Olympic white and Placid Blue guitars, along with, all the, along with my grand total 77495. I even did some pretty crafty calculations and used Connecticut sales tax to assign it as well to give me an overall amount of 826866. Awesome. Now this has already been approved. It's already gotten in here. It's already gone through that form workflow. So this PO can now very easily be emailed or shared out to wherever it needs to go to so that you can go ahead and place an order for it. You can now track this, you can find it, you can search on it. You can also leave all sorts of notes and annotations on here. I can drop a stamp on here to say that this has been approved today or approved by a specific user. These annotations just kind of live on top of the document. I can delete these whenever I want to. I am not affecting the overall core document. So this has been placed. I've got today's date from what, from what it was sent out, but now I'm probably going to get an invoice from this. I'm going to send this over to Fender. They're going to grab it. They're going to send me some, some information. They're also going to send me an invoice. And this is where that capture setup is pretty key. So if you have an invoice that's mailed to you by paper, you can literally go over, grab your paper invoice, drop it on top of your your copier or printer um, that Carlisle has provided for you, you can scan it to a hot folder and we'll be able to pick it up. We can also look at a dedicated email address. Again, a little bit more automation where if I'm in the AP team here at Soundcoast and I get an invoice sent to me, I just forward it to my invoices at uh, soundcoastmusicsupply.com and Global Capture will be able to grab those documents and automate their uh, bringing into 
uh, the global search system. So let's say my invoice shows up and I'm gonna come on over to where my system actually is here. And I've got a couple of different things here. First, you're gonna see that PO sample. This act, the form actually spit this out as well. We can, within a form workflow, release to global search, but we can also drop documents wherever you want to. I've had companies ask about this from an automated standpoint, just to have sort of a, uh, a rough backup of where documents might be. But then again, if you're working in cloud, it's kind of all backed up through Amazon Web Services. So not much of a problem, but I did get this invoice. So let's say that this vendor invoice was sent to me by the vendor company. It was mailed to my office. I went over and I put it down on my scanner and I hit scan to AP, or in this case, test AP. So this document would get scanned. It would get dropped in here. There's a couple of things that are gonna happen with global capture. The most important thing is that global capture can look at a specific folder and every couple of minutes, whatever frequency you may want, it's looking at this specific um, folder to see if there's any new documents in there. And if there's a new document in there, when it checks, it'll go ahead and just ingest those and eat them up. And so you'll see that within a short moment here, we're gonna see this vendor instrument sample invoice literally disappear and get pulled in through my capture workflow. Now my capture workflow could be pretty much anything. Um, it could be something that is just taking the document and releasing it over to global search um, so that it could start the process of being indexed manually. I can show you what that looks like a little bit later. Um, it could also go through a process of comparing it to a template. I might have a pre-built template for vendor sample invoices. It might also be doing data lookups and assigning automatic data. You can kind of see that that disappeared right there as it goes through the process. It could be reading specific data off of there. In this case, I might want to grab some of some of the header data off of this invoice. Things like my my total due that's in the footers. Things like um, the header invoice of uh, the the invoice number and my PO number, the requisitioner, the vendor name. Things like that. Um, I may also have it do a lookup and say, "Hey, I have a vendor a, a vendor that's actually really interesting. A vendor name named Fender." That's quite difficult to say. I have a vendor name that equals Fender. So do I already have maybe a pre-approved approver who can go in and take a look at that? And so as we continue to sort of look at what that might look like, this process is happening in the background. So as, as Eric mentioned, nobody's taking time out of their day to, to really babysit this process. Documents are coming in and documents are coming out. And because there's more of an automated instance that's happening here, we're able to very easily have these processes running in the background um, where they're creating the best sort of value add for you. Um, you might be working on a whole nother project. You might be working on a whole other set of routines. You don't need to worry about where this invoice is going or how it's being routed. Everything just kind of happens wherever it is. So as I'm letting this kind of run through this specific process, I can actually go back over to Global Search and it's very possible that my document has already showed up to where it needs to go. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna grab this. I'm gonna drop out of this because this was my, uh, I'm not gonna save any of my annotations here either. I'm gonna go back over to my accounts table and you'll see that my vendor corporation invoice has been dropped in. Go over to my vendor invoices. It looks like I do have a new one. And there it is with that PO number. So once I open this up, and I grabbed a couple of key pieces of information off of this, namely the invoice number and the date and things like that. I've got my amount or my, oh, apparently I've dropped over into my check number. Um, so I'm grabbing all that other information. I'm grabbing the PO number that exists from there. So I can easily look at this invoice and kick things off. Now you'll notice that I do have a set of cue actions here. And again, because I have a workflow that is looking at Fender Musical Instruments Company, it's actually doing a data lookup and saying, oh, Nick Laurie is the one who's actually responsible for approving this invoice. And these rules can be as bespoke as you need them to. I have a pre-built workflow that I am using here, um, whereby I am able to send out emails to the first approver. If they approve it, it goes to a second approver if one is listed. And then it comes back to AP so that they can finalize maybe GL code, put any other notes on there that they need before saying that this invoice is good to go and that we can mark for payment. Now that email can look like a couple of different things. And I do have a sample here that I can show you. So this email might go out something like this. And again, automated is the key here. I did not have to write this email. Global Search actually wrote this email for me. Here's the specific company. Here's what we need. Here's the actual link to get to it. When we click on that link, 
it will take us here so that we can do our actions on here. Now I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna say, okay, cool, let me go ahead and approve this. And once I approve it, it's gonna move on to the next move within the chain. Now bear in mind, there is no second approver on this specific invoice that I brought in here. So once approved, it will actually move on to that next bucket, in which case it's ready for approval. It's ready to, or rather not approval, it's ready to be reviewed by AP and then pushed out from there. Now bear in mind that I said I have a first approver, a second approver, I have an approval APQ and a rejection APQ. So what we do often is we use those tasks to go ahead and create these task lists, these buckets. If you've worked in AP for any period of time, you'll know that tasks, tasks and queues are a good way to kind of look at documents and where things are at. So not only am I relying on just emails being sent out because we get a lot of emails within a day, but I can actually go over into this specific task queue and click on any one of these tasks to see and view what's in here. So I might open up specifically that AP entry task and we'll see that my Fender Music um, document that was approved is, is already in here and ready to go. I can also select here and grab my actions here. So this is the final AP step where I might say, hey, this is good to go, it's paid, or I might need to restart the approval process. I might have to move it to reject, but I might also do something called entered into accounting system. And this is stop number three on the automation train in that if you guys are using a specific type of ERP system, things like Jonas, uh, Dynamics GP, NetSuite, Sage, there's a bunch of them. What's very common is that we can do this entered into accounting system and actually export out all of this data and stage it in a file that that system can now import. So not only are you saving time and energy with automating your process of approval, but after you've already approved this invoice, you don't need to turn around and manually key information into your ERP system. We'll stage that data. It'll be picked up by our ERP system and it'll create a new vendor or invoice or a new voucher, whatever that system might call it so that it can be reviewed. Also, if you guys are QuickBooks users and I'll open up this document again, this was our, uh, our original Fender Corporation. If you guys are QuickBooks users, we can also use this to stage data out to QuickBooks. So if you have an on-premise version of QuickBooks, we have a built-in QuickBooks connector that will grab all the key information, including line item details and GL codes, whatever you might be storing, and push that data out to QuickBooks, load it in as an invoice, and even grab the transaction number and bring that back so that you can easily search and find your records on both sides. So again, it's all about, as Eric mentioned, being able to grab a document, being able to digitize a document, being able to route a document based on a set of rules or a set of conditions and terms, have that document come back to AP with some very clear terms. This is an approved vendor invoice. Let's go ahead and send it to QuickBooks or let's approve it in this system and enter it into the accounting system so that we can stage that data and push it out from there. Once in there, that's a whole process where instead of touching that paper, that piece of paper, or even an electronic file that's sitting on a server, you'd have to be touching that document multiple times and keeping track of that document. That's where that time adds up in this particular process. But when it's living in something like Global Search, it goes from the PO requisition to grabbing the invoice, to managing that document information, to getting your approvals, to pushing information back out to your final ERP stage. And since you have all this information in here, you're very easily able to search and find those documents as needed. And if you're working in a cloud-based system, it'll be automatically backed up through AWS. You don't need to worry about it. And you can access that information from pretty much anywhere. This is my pause for dramatic effect. I know you guys are probably putting questions into the chat and that's totally fine. This is everything that I would want to share with you at this point. So again, just a very nice, easy, clean AP process. I will kick it back over to Eric at Carlisle. All right, great. Thanks for so much detail and, uh, and bringing us through how it all works. We do have a bunch of questions in the chat that we can talk about. Um, the first one is just a little bit more in regards to uh, QuickBooks. So can you tell us a little bit about how it uh, how the integration works and if it's online or local um, to save kind of time in that data entry. Yeah, so QuickBooks that we're working with is only for local based QuickBooks. QuickBooks Online is a totally different animal that Intuit provides. And QuickBooks itself has some very specific rules about how data can be pushed to it. So if you are a multiple company user of QuickBooks, you have to have that company file open in QuickBooks. You select the QuickBooks button right here to push that data out. 
and it'll push it right into the open QuickBooks file. Um, this does not work yet with QuickBooks Online, again, because of how QuickBooks is structured. But uh, pursuant to that question from Sonia, it would definitely save time entering data into that system. Okay, great. Uh, just a reminder for everyone else, we've got a few more questions here, but if you have any questions, please uh, just type those into the chat. We'll make sure we get those answered for you. You know, at what point or how is the GL code added? Yeah, this is actually a great question and something that I only want to show when asked. So thank you so much, Cindy. GL coding can be done in a variety of different ways. And you can kind of see down here that I have this table called AP line items. And if I select this table, it'll actually give me a secondary table specifically for storing this information. So again, you could type this in piece by piece. Again, time consuming, prone to error, probably not the best thing. But what I do have built within global search is sort of a one-off ability to grab documents off the page through something called key-free indexing. And what key-free indexing does is it actually scans the page that I'm looking at and allows me to grab all sorts of information off of it. So I might highlight my quantity shipped and I could just click and drag and grab that information. I might grab a product code, which in this case I don't have, I just have a description. So I'll grab in my, I can grab in my description of what the actual document is and drop those in there. I can also grab my price per unit. I can grab my total cost. And here I can actually do some of that GL coding. So I can have a specific set of codes that I might link to your ERP system. Um, so I can go ahead and choose something like admin or finance, or I can geocode each and every one of these. I can also have a specific column where I might also map to a specific location. So if, if maybe this particular Fender Telecaster was going to location A, the next one was going to location B, I can actually enumerate all that information out here onto this graph. And when I stage that data, I will stage that data along with it. Right. Um, another question here is uh, we have multiple locations. Uh, do I need to get this for each location? If not, how would that work? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. In essence, no. So if you're a company that let's say has three locations throughout Canada, if you're doing something cloud-based, everybody can access this from the specific um, location that they are at. And something that you might do is you might have another index field here whereby you might have a location code or a location name so that when you're searching, maybe you're only searching on a specific location or when your users log in, they're only looking at a specific location whenever they search. Um, so this will allow you to save some time and energy. You don't have to worry about specific um, entities unless you wanted to do so. We do allow multiple database setups. So you might have a database for location A and a database for location B, depending on what kind of data you're looking to store. Great, uh, I also got a couple of direct ones here. Um, I don't have a very technical team. Um, how does implementation work slash training in terms of getting people up to speed on the software? Yeah, absolutely. So our implementations are built that we build the system out for you. It's a, uh, a process by which we build the system, we test the system, and then we actually provide training at the end of it and go into something called user acceptance. So we'll provide the system as based on a scope of work, whatever that scope may be. That system is then given to you. We're trained on your team with it. We also have long-term training uh, available on a online learning management system where you can access and learn a little bit more about the software and be able to get around it. It's specifically targeted towards end users and how they would go about using the system. Okay. Yeah, further to that one, just from the, the Carlisle perspective, because uh, we have this implemented in our operation, you know, we actually did very limited training with our team. Um, you know, we, we used the online training that was available to us and just we found it was a very intuitive system once set up that people could very easily grasp and be able to, um, to use in terms of their approvals and workflows. So it's, it's worked really, really well for us. Um, We've got a couple more questions here. Uh, if POs are done within Square 9, does it also go into the accounting system to update inventory? So if you are doing the POs here, and a lot of this depends on whether or not your accounting system does it, it's very common that an accounting system, you'll be creating the POs there, and maybe you're just storing the POs in a system like this. You're just using this just to kind of do some very quick and easy searching and, and storing those documents. If you're creating the POs within um, global search itself using this specific form that I showed you, we could potentially push that data to an, to an accounting software and store just the data of the PO. When it comes to actually managing inventory and kind of doing PO releases, that would actually be done within your accounting software um, specifically. So you can kind of set up a workflow there that once a PO exists, it might give you those line items and start to release that data from inventory as needed. That's not something that we would trigger from the global search side. 
I guess further down on Cindy, is we, we do have integrations with a lot of backend softwares, depending on what that is. So we can talk about that a little bit more too, as to, as to what that might look like. Um, the, the next one is around the, the licensing. So um, you know, the question there is just if they've got 20 people in the office, do they do they need to license for everybody, or how does how does that work with with Square Nine? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are all concurrent licensing. So to Sonia's point, if you have 20 people in the office, you have 20 individual logins. Everybody has their own login. They have their own rules and permissions about what they can access. But you're only paying for five licenses concurrently. Only five people can log in at one time. And we can set up any kind of um, auto logout for inactivity so that if somebody walks away and goes to lunch, still logged into Global Search after 15 minutes or 20 minutes, it'll boot someone out so that another seat will be open for another person to log on. Yeah, so that does, um, Tony, that's actually been something that's been great for, for us at Carlisle as well. Yeah, just because we're a lot, we have a, a large organization with lots of team members, but they're not all needed to be in at the same time. So we only have a handful of licenses um, and we haven't really have any problems with it. So it kind of reduces our costs rather than different softwares out there where you need, okay, if you've got 20 people that want access, all 20 people that need a license. When really, if, if you're only going to have three, four, five people in there at any given time, it, it allows you to reduce your costs. And, and that kind of goes down to, you know, a question from Ross about, you know, what the one-time costs are and ongoing costs. So Ross, I can speak to that one a little bit. You know, one of the great things we like about Square Nine is just the scalability of the software. So, you know, you can go with, you know, a basic forms feature, or you can go with a full integration um, with document capture and, and uh, document automation. So to do that, and when we can reach out to you after this, we would, we would kind of do a scope of work and to try to understand what you're looking to accomplish inside your organization. And we can do something kind of customized to you. There is, um, there's both, there's the ongoing costs as well as the one-time costs, um, but we can kind of customize that, customize that for you. So we can reach out after that and kind of go through that in more detail. Cause there is just, it's such a scalable solution. It can be all over the map. All right, we've got another question here from, from Lisa. And that's, uh, I'm one person who handles all finances for the company, start to finish. The only issue I have is all the paper. Does it make sense to use a system like this just to have everything digitized? What is the cost for something basic like that? Yeah, that's a great question. So Lisa, I'm probably your best friend then, because when you're one person that's managing everything, especially in the small company setup, something like this is very easy to do. So if you go with something like a very sort of common, easy setup where you're just storing documents and you're bringing them in and maybe doing some of that key free indexing, um, the cost could be very low. A lot of it kind of depends on what you're looking to do. Um, to Ross's point, if you're looking to host it, it's more of a subscription kind of setup. If you're looking to buy it and install it locally, you're buying the software with a small maintenance and support type contract. Um, but I can tell you that, you know, we can have systems as low as from an annual licensing standpoint, around $1,500 American per year for just a very simple, what we call business essentials, but covers AP, AR, human resources and contracts. So it's a very easy system to get into. Something that I think Carlisle does a very good job with is that we work with a lot of people on these small companies for just a very easy, maybe AP deployment. And then a year later, they come back and they say, hey, can I add HR to this? Yeah, absolutely. So this is absolutely scalable to you. So whatever you buy into, it's not that you're stuck there and now you need to redo the whole thing and retool it. If you want to start to add it as you add more people and you become less of a one man show, you can easily do that with this system. Right. Um, we also have another question in regards to digitization of the documents. Um, so let's say if you're getting your, your invoices in um, on, by paper, you're scanning them in to a shared fold, folder, does it, does it matter which manufacturer you have for your, your equipment or is it agnostic across all equipment? It's agnostic across all equipment. Um, so in this case, we're any kind of any kind of desktop scanner and even any kind of MFP. And I know that Eric and the Carlisle team can probably speak to the equipment much more than I can. Scanning to a hot folder is a pretty basic function. Um, so any kind of equipment that you might have, or if you're looking to update your equipment through Carlisle, you're going to be in good shape to be able to digitize those paper documents. Okay, great. So pretty much they can use any any software that they currently have in place or any equipment they currently have in place would be able to be usable. Mm -hmm. Or, um, all right, the last question we see here is just around um, uh, how do people get started? So, you know, it seems like a, an involved process. You know, what is the process to kind of get, get kicked off with uh, Square Nine and understanding how it can help them? 
Yeah, absolutely. So from a from a kind of pre-sale standpoint, you can connect with the Carlisle team with Eric or anyone on his team to get maybe a much more sort of uh, deeper look into this, maybe provide some of your documents. We will create a detailed scope around that. Um, and as we have that scope, you sign up on that scope, you get put into an implementation queue. That's roughly a kickoff call after you sign everything off. Um, and then roughly, depending on the size of your project, anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of months to kind of build everything out. Again, depending if you're looking to do integrations or if you have workflows that are much more involved. Our more entry level business essentials packages can be done and stood up, especially in the cloud-based world um, in a very short amount of time. Great. Uh, we do have actually another question that just came through. Um, is this package expandable to a full accounting system uh, to financial statements? Yeah, so as far as being able to pull in uh, financial statements, so if, you're, if your ERP is pushing out the financial statements and then it says, hey, here's a file, you deal with it and you go, great, another file, you can absolutely load something like that into here. And that's where we might create maybe a sub archive or another archive for financial statements because we might index those differently. There might be sort of a date range that's covered. There might be uh, maybe a, a financial statement number or an ID. Um, so we can kind of uh, stage all those documents there so that you could search them, find them and share them as needed. I will point out though, that based on that question, we would not be the ones that would be creating those financial statements. We're just gonna be mostly storing the financial statements from another piece of software. Right, right great point, great point. All right. Well, those are the, the questions that we had. So um, just wanted to take a moment just to thank everyone very much for, for joining us today for this webinar. Hopefully it was informative in terms of you know, what the software can do, as well as how it might be able to assist in your organization. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself, Eric Johansson, or uh, Sandra De La Rosa, uh, or any of your, anyone that you're currently dealing with at Carlisle. And we'll be happy to kind of do a customized demo for you of exactly how this might work with your specific situation. And we can dive into some more details uh, within that. But we very much appreciate you, you joining us. And Nick, thank you very much for a great and very informative uh, webinar. And we hope everyone has a great rest of their Wednesday. Thank you so much for having me, Eric. Thank you, Carlisle team. And thank you, everyone who, who joined. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye.